Recruitment marketing for care. That means looking at recru looking at recruitment with a with a marketing ethos on it. So that's what we're going to uh, briefly go through on this presentation. Uh, recruitment in care is difficult, but it certainly isn't impossible. In fact, it's far from impossible. Um, you just need to be a little bit better than your competitors. And in order to do that, you've got to be creative and planned recruitment is vital. You can't just expect it to uh, to just happen. You can't expect just to stick out the odd advert. It's going to be a planned um, activity with systems behind it. And as long as you're better than your competition, you will absolutely smash care recruitment. So how many people are operating a targeted recruitment strategy with a written plan? Not many. You need creative advert writing, blog posts, social media campaign, images, videos, etc. All these things are called assets. And these are things you pump out constantly. It's not just a case of putting out one advert. It's a sustained activity done over time. So you've got to look at your writing. You've got to look at blog posts. You've got to look at your social media. You've got to look at create an actual campaign with, with right images that people find attractive, with videos on it. You've got to put all these assets together and use them together in a, in a, um, in a campaign. You've got to do the research. So look at the population data, and you can get this from the ONS, uh, and focus on areas that are the highest number of your target demographic. So for example, 80% um, of people in the care sector are female. So you might want an area in, the, in your area that is 20 to 25 year old females in the lower house price bracket. They may be a good area to target. So you look at the Office of National Statistics, you can download all this data from the ONS, and that will give you a geographical area that you can actually focus on. That means you're not wasting your money in, in, in areas where you're not going to get anybody anyway. You can then spreadsheet of postcode areas containing the highest number of targets in your age or sex demographic. And that will target it down even further. So you've got specific postcode areas where people are most likely to be wanting jobs from yourself. And concentrate your recruitment activity in those areas. Have a recruitment budget. This is really important. Recruitment will cost money. So you have to allocate a budget to the recruitment and to that campaign that you are generating, that you are creating. And you need to work out what, what's a care worker worth to your business. Do you know that? If you don't know what a care worker is worth, you really need to find that out because that will drive how much you're prepared to spend on your budget if you actually know what they're worth to your business. And you need to know the figures for all the above so that you can set that effective and realistic budget. So, for example, if a care worker works 25 hours per week, how much value are they adding to your business? What does that add up to in a year? How much does it cost to recruit that care worker? If you know how much value the care worker will bring the business, then you should be able to say what you're prepared to pay for a new member of staff. So, for example, if a care worker is doing 25 hours per week, adds 125 hours a week profit to the business, then they could be adding £6,000 a year to your business. How much are you prepared to pay to generate £6,000 of profit? That's how you have to start thinking. Um, come across a lot of people where they, you know, if you say, oh, it's £500 per person or £1,000 per person, they'll say that's too much. But if I was to say to you, um, if you give me £1,000, I'll give you 6000 back, you'd think that was a pretty good deal. And that's the kind of mindset we've got to get. We've got to change the mindset here in order to find out what budget it is that we want to set. So, for example, £500 per applicant, let's say it's that. So if you want to recruit two staff per month, your budget is two times 500, so it's £1,000 per month. And that will generally be earned back in profit in the first four to six weeks of employment. So you get somebody on, you, you spend £1,000, you get two people on, and within four six weeks, they've made that money back. So if they're staying eight weeks, 10 weeks, 12 weeks, they're now adding to the business. And that's how you've got to start thinking. Um, we've got a dedicated video for this, so I'm not going to go into it a bit uh, much on here. We've actually got a dedicated video on budgeting for care recruitment, 19 minutes long. If you go to the to our CareSkilled YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash c forward slash careskilledcouk, or you can just Google CareSkilled YouTube, your, our, our channel will come up and you can get that budgeting for care recruitment video on there. Got to set your target numbers. Decide how many care workers you want or need to recruit. That should come from your capacity planning work. A growing domiciliary care business, for example, will require far more staff than an established 30 bed home with a very low staff turnover. So you've got to know how many staff you're likely to want. 
you need to know and work out exactly how many full-time equivalent staff you need and how that translates to actual numbers of staff. So a full-time equivalent staff is, you might say, right, a full-time number is, is, 30, is 40 hours a week, that's a full-time member of staff. But if they're two part-time staff working 20 hours, then that's two people to work that full-time equivalent. So your full-time equivalent might be one, but the actual numbers are two because they're two part-timers. So that's what a full-time equivalent means. You work out your full-time equivalent, just for ease, and then you can say how many actual people do you need to, to fill that gap, gap. And set your recruitment target numbers against timelines so you can measure how effective your recruitment is. So you say, right, over the next 13 weeks, I want to recruit 10 staff over the next 13 weeks, and you can start measuring your effectiveness on that. You've got to log all your activity, because quite simply, what gets measured gets done. So if you're measuring it, it happens. You can look at it. You can start seeing what the best things are doing. What are the best ways of recruiting? What's working for you? What isn't working for you? This is really important. Measuring it and writing it down is really important. So log all your activity and report on your own progress via your key performance indicators. And use a progress sheet and a KPI tracking tool. So your progress sheet is how people are going through your recruitment process, how many you might say, oh, we're interviewing 10 people tomorrow. Uh, we've got five to interview on second interview. We've got three to put on to induction. That's your progress of people going through. And your KPI tracking tool is how many people, how many physical people did we um, interview last week? How many people of those interviews did we load on? Um, did we actually load onto a induction course? How many people actually passed the induction course? So they start tracking all these figures and then start looking at them. So use both of those. Create a sales pitch. Recruitment is a sales and marketing activity. You've got to create adverts and recruitment marketing assets specifying these areas. Survey your staff and get real quotes about what, why they like working in care and why they like working for your company. There is no point just putting out a generic advert the same as everybody else's that's basically a job description. We need a carer with car and this is the job description. You've got to sell it. You've got to say why it's good working for you. You've got to attract them to come to you, not demand why people should come to you or demand what you're looking at from them. You've got to turn it on its head and sell to them. Sell your company, sell the job. So ask your staff, why do they like working for you? Why do they like working in care? Use quotes and use testimonials in the same way that you would do it on your website to get clients in. So I use these quotes in social media. Uh, I would use these quotes in adverts, social media, videos, etc. You know, even video your staff saying why they like it and use that. These are called assets. Once you've done it once, once you've created an advert, once you've created a social media post, once you've created a video, you can use them over and over again. So that's why we call them assets, because they're physical things you can use over and over again. So put a little bit of time into it. You don't need to spend a lot of money. It doesn't need to be huge. It can just be you on a, on, on a camera talking to your staff, and make it, but make it short, snappy, and you can put these out and why people like working for you. Um, use a sales mentality. So that is, what is it we could give them? Not what they can give us. Like I said, don't just list a job spec. And the pay rate isn't as important as you think it is for the headline. Everybody in your area pays roughly the same. And the reason for that is you all get the same money from the local authority. And the private rates are more or less at a market rate, give or take a couple of pounds here and there. So people pay more or less the same. So putting up the pay rates by a penny or two pennies or five pennies doesn't make the difference you think it does. What really makes the difference is that culture, is that ability to sell, is to get that information and get communicate what you're like as a company over to the people who might think about coming to work for you. Because remember, this is about being better than your competitors. You're not trying to change the world. You're simply trying to be better than somebody else. So if somebody is in the market for a care job, they come to you rather than your competitor. Uh, locate the postcode on an Indeed advert. Not as your office address, this is what I do, not as my office address, but just a random postcode right in the middle of the area that I'm interested in. So I might be in a, in a, in a particular town um, and I might work all over that town or, or city. And my office might be in one area, but um, I might need the carers in another area. So therefore, I'll put the postcode in that area, not my office. That means that when people are looking on Indeed, it will come up showing that area, the area they are interested in. And that's the area you want the job in. So just remember that. You know, don't put the office advert, put where the job actually is going to be. 
Uh, sales pitch has got to be embedded everywhere, absolutely everywhere, in all recruitment channels, media, phone calls, employee brochure, all your other assets. Again, I refer to an asset as anything you produce. Your um, website is an asset. Your pictures and photos you use are assets. Your um, phone calls, if you answer the phone and you have a sales pitch, that's an asset that you've written out a sales pitch. Your employee brochure is an asset. Build up these assets and have that recruitment and that sales pitch embedded in it. So that when people answer the phone, they do it, they know they're answering the phone about a sales, about an inquiry for a job, and they can sell the business in that job. Make your adverts specific. So create specific adverts for each area. We said about putting it on Indeed in, into that area, but create your advert for that area. Don't just say we need a you know we need a care worker in this across the whole town. Specify that exact area that that person is most likely going to be working in. And you want different adverts for full time and part time because again, not just one advert suits all. Uh, people will be attracted to adverts that speak to them about what they want. So if they want part time work um, without a car in a certain area of the town, and you've got a job for that, write an advert just for that. Write another one for the full time. Write another one for a car driver. Write another one for mornings. Write another one for evenings. So you might have five or six jobs, but you're writing specific adverts for each one. So for mornings, evenings, and weekends, write it about that. And repeat the above to create different adverts for each different area you're interested in. So where I've seen um, care agents have one advert for a care for an entire town, I've got about 15 adverts, uh, separate adverts, because I have full-time, part-time, each area of the town that we're in, whether they're walkers, whether they're car drivers, whether it's morning, evening, weekend, I, I tailor it specifically for what I'm interested in. So it'll sell it, I'm selling it to that person. It's saying what they want to hear. Have a dedicated phone number and a dedicated recruitment officer. So that means make sure a dedicated uh, phone number, don't use the on-call number. Don't try and have somebody who's on call also dealing with job inquiries because they've got enough on the plate they're not going to be professional they're not going to go through that sales pitch when they've also got somebody ringing up about the fact that you know a visit's late or a client ringing up about. they've got enough to do so have a completely separate dedicated number just for recruitment that is only picked up by recruitment people now it could be um should be answered the hotline as we call it should be answered by someone who's not on call and who has been trained so they get the sales pattern. You've written out the sales pattern, they get it. Or if senior enough, i.e. if you're a small business, this could be you, the owner, or it could be the registered manager. Um, so it might be that you're not the person on call, but you're responsible for getting people through the door, so you might take that on. So essentially you've got an additional person for recruitment on call, and the chances are it might be you as the owner. If not, have somebody doing that. You can also outsource this to uh, telephone answering services as well, and set that up, that's an opportunity. Um, set a dedicated role, the recruitment officer. And again, for a small business, this might be the owner, it might be the registered man, it might be the deputy. For a slightly larger business, this could be a dedicated, you know, it could be one of your senior carers, field care supervisors who gets a promotion and gets to be made the recruitment officer. Either way, it's a dedicated person and a named person in your structure. It's a named role. Respond quickly with a set pipeline of emails and calls. This is really important. The speed is absolutely vital. Job inquiries are responded to either by email or phone, ideally with 10, 10, between 10 to 30 minutes. If it's a very late inquiry at night, then you get back to them first thing in the morning. Uh, or better still, you can automate all this. You can have an out hours answering service. You can have an, uh, somebody dedicated to doing it on call. You can have an automatic answering machine that uh, creates um, an email. Um, there's lots of different ways of doing this, but the key is speed. Because if you're dragging your feet about it, and one of your competitors will be in there and they will get that person. So email first, then follow up with a phone call. You know, so straight away you email, acknowledge they've got it, and then follow it up as fast as you possibly can. Screening interview on the first phone call. So don't just use that phone call as a way of getting somebody in to see you. Use that as the first interview. Ask the questions. This is why you need a trained person doing it. Ask the questions, ask what you like, screen that person, have that interview, you're there speaking to them, so interview them. There's no reason that you have to have in them arrange them to come in. When you do invite them to come in or do an online interview, that can be the second interview where it gets a little bit more in depth about what you want. 
and it's got to be done immediately. There's no sending out application forms or sending in CVs from them. That You can do all that at induction. You need an application form because you need the information to make a decision on whether you hire, but that can be done later. Um, that can be completed later when you're, you can actually start that on training. What you want to do is through values-based recruitment is find out, is this person likely to be a good carer? Have they got the right skills? Have they got the right value set? If they have, get them in. Cut out all the barriers you can. So no sending out um, CVs and no sending out application forms or asking to get CVs in. If you're speaking to somebody, interview them, invite them in. Use the sale pitch that we created at stage two along the whole recruitment process. So every time you're selling in an advert, you're selling when you may make a phone call, you're selling when you send an email, you're selling when you're doing the interview. So you might ask asking them questions in the interview to ascertain whether they've got the right, um, the right values for your business. But at the same time, you're also selling your business. You want them to leave thinking, I really want to work there. Yeah, that's what you want. You want to build that information up there. So you're selling as you're, in th you're interviewing. Be enthusiastic. Be upbeat about it all. Follow up with a second email and a text. And then use a chain of text and emails right up to the interview and stay in touch and act as reminders. You can automate that. You can use uh, email automation systems and chains of emails. But it's about staying in contact. And again, you're selling the company. Selling it as you constantly stay in contact right the way up to induction. Multiple channels. A channel is a, um, uh, a method you use to recruit and you can't rely on one source. So we see that everybody uses Indeed or everybody uses Facebook. Those are two channels. Indeed is a channel. Facebook is a channel. Um, putting up, dropping flyers is a channel. And the idea is to use as many channels as you possibly can. To do, and to do that properly so you don't waste money and waste time, you need to plan for it. This goes right back to what we said at the beginning. You need to plan for that recruitment activity. That's why we use it as a campaign. Uh, the plan needs to be executed effectively and efficiently. And like any plan, you need to know your goals, objective, what resources you have, what your timelines are, and a clear process of how to achieve them. Write all this down. You've got you develop your assets. You've got your timelines. You know how many people you want to recruit. You know what budget you've got. So you list out all the channels you've, you're planning to use and plan when you're going to use them. I mean, I personally use a 13 week uh, recruitment marketing plan or activity planner, and we've got over 30 separate channels of which indeed is just one. And of that 30 separate channels, we say what day over the 13 weeks we're doing what. Some of them repeat every single day, such as social media, and some are, uh, you know, once a month or even or even more rare. You know, we could set up um, uh, a stall at a, um, a, a farmer's market um, or in a town center. We might only do that you know, once a summer or, or once every quarter. Um, so you're putting that activity, you're listing the activities and you are saying when you're going to do each one. Complete this and set the budgets against it and use all the channels. The more channels you use, the more likely people to see your, your company, more likely to know it and more likely to come in and talk to you and then you're more likely to sell them and get a job out of them. You need a website dedicated to recruitment, and I don't mean a separate website. I'm talking here about um, your website, your standard website with dedicated recruitment pages on it. And that means you can use the link to those pages in your adverts so that people don't go and find anything else about your website. They go to the just the part they're talking about recruitment. Um, so it's a part of the website focused on recruitment rather than focusing on getting clients. I remember, Recruitment is a sales and marketing activity. It's just the flip side of, of the same that you do to get clients in. Have a dedicated se uh, section on selling the job. Carers' stories, which we talked about already. Case studies, carers' quotes that we've talked about. Videos of carers talking about the job. That's really important. Get it there on your website, get it on your social media, because it's take, making people know your business a bit better. And the best thing is, have a look at the McDonald's recruitment website. It's there, it's a https forward slash forward slash people.mcdonalds.co.uk. Nothing about uh, flipping burgers in there. It's all about what they can offer young people. So have a look at that. Have a look at the way they, they word it. Have a look at what they're saying in the communication. It's very, very simple and very effective. So in summary, there's no special secret to recruitment. There's no magic bullet. There's no secret recruitment website that other people know about that you don't. 
You've got to set the target number of care workers. You've got to set the budget. You've got to set the timelines. You've got to know your demographics. You've got to use multiple channels simultaneously. You've got to set up recruitment pipelines. You've got to plan all the above in a set action plan and a campaign. You've got to target and record your progress. And you've got to refine it and repeat it. So the reason you measure it is you find out what works, you find out what doesn't work, you find out what mistakes you've been made, you refine it and you go again. And you keep that going, keep that going. Do you want to know more? Follow me on social media. I post regularly about care recruitment with tips and advice and, and all sorts of other things as well. And it's all completely free. Go to my link tree, which is https colon slash slash linktr.ee slash crowdersi. That's linktree slash crowdersi. Uh, the link is also in the comment section. If you're watching this on YouTube, the link's in the comment section. Um, go there, and then from there, you can sign up to all my social media channels there. And I'm posting about recruitment pretty much every day. This gives you some ideas that the kind of people we work with. Um, we work with big companies, small companies, local authorities, um, international companies, governments, um, of, across the entire spectrum of the of the health and social care and childcare sector. Um, so you know we work with a big variety of people, and we work with startups, we work with owner-operated businesses as well. So if you've got any issues, um, give us a call. We can work with you. We work with home care, we work with care homes, we work with children's homes, hospitals, public, private sector, and you know, let's get a chat. If you've got any issue whatsoever, whatever it is, give us a chat. You can go to calendly.com forward slash Simon hyphen care skilled slash 30 min. Again, that link is actually in the comments if you want to just uh, go down to the comments and then you can click on that. You can book a 30 minute uh, conversation. We'd love to hear from you. These are just a few of the things which we get involved with.